Hello, I'm back again. Today I have here the launch key mini in the version 3. So Mark 3, it's a really little nice device to take, for example, on a trip, have it with you in your bag because it's really small size here, pretty thin as well, as you can see, I hope. And it has also some connectors, some additional ones. So you can also control external MIDI here and also connect a sustain battle, which is not so common on such small devices. Besides that, you have a nice little two octave keyboard, several pads, control knobs, and some buttons. So let's see what you can do with Bitwig with it. As you see, we've driven by Moss version 7.5. There is now the support for the launch key Mini Mark III. It gets detected automatically, and you can simply click on Add to have the device ready for you. If you need to assign it manually you need to be aware that you need to put the second port first and choose the first one which is the MIDI keyboard here on to the second input port. If you did so you will see also if you go to a track you will have two new inputs. The first one here is a pads one and the other one is a keyboard so you can also have the choice to control this separately because here on the pads there are also the options to play some stuff in the free assignment mode but we will see about that later so what can you do with the device it's not so simple as it might look in the first place you have here separately the keyboard which can be controlled by the pitch band by the modulation wheel and that's basically the one channel you have the other one is about the pads and the knobs so you have different modes for the pads and different modes for the knobs so how do you control them you can do that by using the shift key so if you press the shift key here you will see different modes they are also named here up here over the pads so you have three modes here for the pads which you see on the left in the amber color and on the right you will have five modes for your knobs up here and here starting with them so you can control the volume which is a normal mode so this should be the first channel second channel and so on and to navigate those channels you also you need to use a shift key and here you see you can go to the left or right channel to move in your channel selections. Second mode is pretty similar so this controls a panorama not too surprising here. Next one is the sense. This looks a little bit more interesting because you can switch here between the sense 1 and the sense 2. So only two cents are supported but this is something provided by the device itself so i cannot extend this to more sadly and there is a custom mode which allows you to assign any knob you want to bitwig the usual way you can simply say okay i want to map the volume here to this controller move your knob and you can control this in that mode as well so these are the modes on the right uh, of, i forgot the device also device not that surprising you have a device selected and can change here the parameter value you can also if we add another device let's add here for example whatever a blur here you will see if i use now those track knobs with the shift you can toggle between here the different devices you have on your channel and here with shift and the octave up and down you can move here inside of the parameter bank okay so much for these modes on the right so the knob modes on the left you have three modes a session drum and a costume mode as well so the session is also straightforward you have your pads relate to your clips and you see you can start them here in Bitwig as well. These are the scene buttons so you can start here the first scene start the second scene you can long press the lower one to switch between another area of modes and these modes come up here on this first row so you can choose to show only one row of pads for the session clips and the second one can have a different functionality for example you can say i want to have the recording arm here below there and then you can toggle the record arm as well you can have next one is the selection so then you can select the eight tracks here directly from the pads which is maybe quite handy for playing live you can have the same for mute so you can mute different tracks solo and this one stops the track for example here let's play that and then you can press that to stop that track 
playback. And back to the first one, this one turns it off. So you then see again also here clips on that row. And that one also works always as a scene start. If you press it just shortly and if you keep it pressed, you have that selection. So much about these. What did I forget? Next one here is a drum. It's a full blown drum sequencer. So you see a 16 drum grid. You see also where there is a sound in it, where not. You can play them here and you can toggle between those play view. And if you go here, you will see what's inside of that sound. You need to have a clip here. Let's create a new one. For example, this one is empty. Let's go back to here. So we select here the bass drum and you can say, okay, let's put here a bass drum in it. And you will see that it should be also here. You see here your bass drum down there. You can also play that back if you go here the session start that one playback back to the drum sequencer you see the sequencer running you can select for example a snare you can also record it live if you want so with that one you can toggle here the override mode play it live so you can combine that if you want you can go back here to record something here uh, with that. You can quickly insert here some hi-hats. Oh, that's also nice. So nice little sequencer, let's stop that. So that one toggles between those play and step mode and that one can also be pressed. And here you have further options. So you can change the resolution of your step grid. For example, now I have 16, but could go down to eighths, for example. And if you go now to the step, you see we have it now in the eighth grid instead here over 16th. So you have the different options. This one toggles between the different pages. So if your clip is longer and does not fit here in 16 steps, you can go to the second, third page and so on. Here you can toggle the metronome. So we have a metronome playing. Funny sound. Turn it off again. And here you can also go up and down with your notes to play higher or lower notes as well. So that's about it here in a drum sequencer. And the last one is a costume mode. So this one can be configured with the tool that comes with the Launch Key Mini. And there you can assign different notes however you want to have it. I, for example, I changed this one so you see it's different. It's just here green and red. And maybe let's change the track here. Let's go to the polysynth. And here you see it just plays the notes here and you can with that tool you can change, change the notes or do whatever you want with it, change the color. So this is also maybe interesting for a live performance. The ARP is the normal functionality so you can use a hardware arpeggiator is also still working. You can change that and also the fixed chords is also working as a hardware function. These knobs are only bit -week specific if you use it with the shift. And this is for playback and recording for into the arranger is also available. And now I think we covered everything and if you take it with you on a trip on a nice little island, enjoy it and make some funky music.